Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Rubin and I am a student at the College of Staten Island where I am a double major in Dramatic Arts and English Linguistics with a minor in SLP. At CSI, I'm the student president of our Hillel Club. With my involvement in Hillel, I have gotten to have three leader positions along with being a PNEI or Peer Networking Engagement Intern and a Ruderman Ambassador for two years. I now work with Hillel International as a Hillel at Homey to help bring exciting sessions to students throughout this academic year. The session is part of Hillel at Homey's ongoing programming titled, Why Celebrate JDAM? If you're wondering what JDAM stands for, it stands for Jewish Disability Advocacy Month. For information on future sessions, please visit this website, hillelathome.org. My name is Lily Koltoff. I am a communications associate at Hillel International, uh, where I focus primarily on internal communications. I graduated from American University in Washington, DC in December, 2019. At AU, I studied communication studies with a minor in public health. Um, before graduating, I interned at Hillel International in the communications department. Um, and also with the DC Department of Health and Respectability. I also have worked with Hillel's Ruderman Ambassadors in the past. Um, I'm originally from Erdenheim, Pennsylvania, a small town right outside of Philadelphia. And I've been here since the pandemic began, but I'm excited to go back to DC sometime soon. I guess we can jump right into it. Uh, so Anthony, what really sparked your interest in becoming a disability advocate? What really garnered my interest in becoming a disability, disability advocate actually was being involved in my school's Center for Student Accessibility, where students of all ages who have a disability, they could get accommodations, they could get testing needs that they need, they have a counselor. And also um, in Hillel, like I mentioned in my bio, I was a Ruderman ambassador for two years and that was through Hillel. And I got to do really nice programming with the Center for Student Accessibility where we did a program back in April of 2019, which was My Story, which is an event that CSI, CSA ha has done before where they have a panel of students and staff that have disabilities and they like talk personal stuff about who they are, what like what's their disability, how have they grown from it. And for me, being able to work with Hillel and with CSA really helped me understand why I loved doing disability advocacy work. What about you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say my answer to that um, is that part of it is personal um, for my own disability identity. Um, when I was in middle school and high school, my mom always made sure that I went to my schools, um, my IEP and 504 meetings at school. IEPs, 504s are both um, learning. Uh, IEPs, individualized education plan. 504 is a similar um, idea which helps students with disabilities, students who require accommodations secure those in an educational setting. Um, my mom brought, the, brought me to those in middle school, in high school, she had me lead them. So that was sort of disability advocacy, um, but I didn't quite recognize it as that yet. Um, but in my freshman year of college, I actually got contacted by our engagement associate at my Hillel, um, bringing up Jewish Disability Advocacy Day, which is a great event that happens on the Hill every year, not this year, um, unfortunately not in person, uh, hosted by the Jewish Federations of North America. And it's a great event for Jews, disability advocates, people who are both people who are neither, but who care about these causes come together. It's a day of learning and also a day of advocacy. Um, she invited me to attend. I went and it just really clicked for me that this was a combination of two things that really deeply matter to me and something I really want to be a part of. So you talked about 
Hillel being a source of your uh, disability advocacy journey, something that really um, started it for you. So what made you want to focus on inclusion work at your Hillel, um, bring those two together? What made me focus on bringing inclusion in Hillel, but also like with bringing CSA, Hillel, CSA and Hillel together, um, our executive director, Amy Posner, asked me back in uh, fall of 17 if I wanted to attend a Rudiment Inclusion Summit. I didn't know exactly what that was, but when she told me that it was about disability advocacy, partnerships coming together to promote disability um, advocacy and awareness, I was like, okay, this is actually really interesting. And that's where my disability advocacy started. In 2018 and 19, for two years, I was a Rudiment ambassador, which was really nice. I got to meet, I got to meet, of course, Hannah Henschel, who we all know, who is the leader of student engagement for the Rudiment ambassadors. And figuring out like what type, what types of events we would want to do, especially for in our in CSI, the month of April, it's it's Disability Advocacy Month. We had to really figure out what would the students want to have or be engaged with and to also include the students with disabilities. That's why our executive, the executive director, Amy Posner and I decided, why don't we do um, a, a, an event back in April, 2019, which was to do a My Story event, which, it, which I mentioned before, had to do with students and staff that are in a panel that have disabilities and we did it slightly different. We did it in a play form. The reason why is because I know a theater a company on Staten Island, which is Illuminar Arts Productions that I've worked with back in 2014 when I was a sophomore. And I decided why not? I'll ask them if they would like to participate and help us with a play which they have, which had to do with uh, people that are disabled, which I thought would be a really nice event. And it was really enjoyable. So. Having a lot of uh, inclusion work is really cool and interesting for me. That's incredible to hear um, the show, all of that. Um, yeah, that's a really, really awesome place to come from. Yeah. Thank you. So Lily, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Where did you encounter disability advocacy? Did you encounter it in school? Any type of events that you might have went to at UA? So it's an interesting question because you can look at it a couple of ways. Um, where I actually encountered disability advocacy um, as a topic, as sort of um, a focus was at events like JDAD, um, was with the Ruderman Ambassadors, um, my work at respectability. Something I really noticed um, is that oftentimes when organizations, different groups are talking about um, inclusion work, which really important or really big focus right now, um, they talk about all different types of inclusion. And I don't wanna prioritize any type of inclusion over another. Um, wanna put that out there, say that because inclusion is incredibly important, but they always left disability out of the picture. Um, and it was especially hard just trying to go to these feedback groups, trying to go to town halls where they would talk about inclusion, access, equity, and disability was always left out. So that kind of gets into the other part of the question, which is I've encountered disability advocacy really everywhere um, because disability advocacy has to be encountered anywhere there, is, there isn't accessibility or disability inclusion. Um, so it's something that's always really top of mind for me, um, you know, and even in the small things, image descriptions on photos on social media, um, access to buildings, are things ADA compliant? Um, so really everywhere. 
If you had to choose one advocacy event that you joined um, or participated in, what would it be and why that one? Hmm. I know the answer to this one, which is really interesting. One advocacy event that I did participate in, which I had a lot of fun to recruit and work with, also with the theater company that I mentioned, the Luminards, was the My Story event, where we worked with a theater company, Luminars Productions, that that where they do plays and performances based on it would be could be binge drinking, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and also reflecting on people that are with the with disabilities. So doing the My Story event with them in play form, and we also were in a panel, that really intrigued my interest in like the event that I did, which was which was a lot of fun. Everyone enjoyed it. It was just a great time, especially especially getting to know each other, like not knowing that oh some of the panel members did have a disability like me. That's like also the best part about doing events, sharing one thing. You can create many things together. Yeah, that's that's awesome and again, that you're able to bring those interests together and that you were, you know, able to plan it and be a part of it. Thank you. It was a, it was a lot of fun. It was a ton of fun. Let's see, I have another question for Leo Lily. Why did you choose to become an advocate for those with disabilities? That's, yeah, another really good question. Um, so I think part of it, like I mentioned before, is personal. Um, sort of, I had to become an advocate for myself. Um, and that really inspired me um, to, you know, want to support others in that journey as well. Um, I also just feel like it, it, uh, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging. I don't want to sound all high and mighty, but it sort of came naturally to me. It sort of was, you know, recognizing injustice, seeing injustice and saying, we need to fix this. We need to correct this. Um, you know, there's inequality in all of these places. Um, just like we would fight for women's rights, uh, racial justice, you know, uh, justice for LGBT individuals, disability justice makes just as much sense to be up there to be a priority. I agree 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, like I was saying with diversity and inclusion, disability is just as much a part of that. Mm -hmm. So what is the best thing about being a disability advocate who happens to be a dis happens to have a disability and be Jewish? So, growing up having a disability, I've always had the uh, the feeling of self doubt. If I were to go to school or if I were to be on campus, I would think, "Well, someone like me, as a person with a disability, or someone likely might yeah, like me if I'm also Jewish." I've always had like that notion ever since I was in middle school. Will someone like me? Will someone not make fun of me or pick on me because I have a disability and I'm Jewish? Guess what? I have grown from that. Ever since I also went to high school and now in CSI, being a part of CSA, the Center for Student Disability and being in Hillel, I've grown out of my shell. I love who I am. Being a disability advocate who is not only, not only had a disability, has had it since they were two and a half, and also being Jewish growing up, it's a strong suit. Because for many, you think, oh, how can they do so much work if they have a disability and also they are Jewish? How can they do that? I put a lot of hard work and soul into what I do, which is, which is best. I love going to school. I love working with many different types of people and individuals, including working in Hillel. It's not only showed me what type of things I can do, but I've grown, I've grown from them. And those that are 
whoever is going to be watching this, I want to make sure that you can do anything you put your mind to it. Even if you think you can't, look into your heart and soul. You can. Don't let anybody bring you down. Yes, snaps for that. Or uh, we can do applause, ASL applause. Yes. Good thing for everyone to know. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think, I guess we'll both answer this one, but um, what role do you find or feel like your Judaism plays in your disability advocacy? And why does disability advocacy feel particularly Jewish to you? If you need, if you need a second, I can answer that one too. Um, by, all means, by all means, go for it. Yeah, I think it. I think it goes well with um, what you were saying, and uh, sort of touching on the question you just answered a little bit, and then going into this one. Um, I'm going to keep coming back to that first JDAD I went to, um, Jewish Disability Advocacy Day, because I remember when I got the link from my um, from our engagement associate at Hillel, when I first got it, I was a little bit like, there's Jewish Disability Advocacy Day. It seemed very, I just, I had never heard of it before. And I don't, I, it was kind of shocking that it was a thing. Um, and I went and it was one of those moments where I just felt an instant um, sensation of belonging and instant sensation of community and really you know there are these all these people here who share these same identities with me who share these same intersecting identities with me and these same passions and really it was just it was such an incredible feeling to be among these people who were like me and cared so deeply about the same things as me um and I I just I learned so much that first day and really every time I engage in a Jewish disability advocacy space um all of these different Jewish stories Jewish concepts we've heard um there's you know Moses an incredible prophet the leader really who led our people out of slavery and into freedom. What a speech impediment. Uh, Jacob, one of our patriarchs walked with a limp. Really all these things that we either don't know or don't really pick up as important details of the story. Like all these great Jewish leaders, both biblical and also modern um, people with disabilities and so first of all, there's that, there's Jewish concepts, things like the Tselem Elohim were made in God's image so that the way we are is perfect, even if it's different, deviant from the norm, even from what's considered normal. Um, so really there's all of these little links that you really, you don't, might not think of at first, but come through. Um, and it just, that's, Judaism bolsters disability advocacy by adding these concepts, adding this grounding in faith to the mission. Um, and disability advocacy feels Jewish for those reasons. It, you can find it throughout the history of Judaism. Um, and this drive for tikkun olam, repairing the world, for you know, doing good, bringing people together, loving your neighbor, all of that Jewish disability advocacy brings them together. I agree one hundred percent. And I'm also going to bring back to what you said about community, um, finding. Um, out of finding a group that has to, if you find someone that is disabled or a group that has to do disability advocacy or an office on campus. And if you find a Halal club or Jewish club on campus, you have your community right there. They will accept you, they will include you. 
or a part of their family and doing so many things for advocacy, disability, Jewish, Jewish disability advocacy. It's an amazing feeling. I agree so strongly. How do you feel your Jewish and disability identities intersecting and how do they impact one another? Intersecting you like come together in a way? Uh, yeah, I mean, the idea of intersecting identities, I think, is a big one, one that um, is really, really important to consider in a lot of social justice work. Um, when we think about, you know, the intersections between gender and race, um, race and sexual orientation, identity, um, not to get really, uh, well, to bring to examples that are somber, but realistic, you know, when you think about the disproportionate rates of abuse faced by um, people of color who are also trans, uh, when we talk about the intersection between, you know, uh, women of color, um, things like that. So intersecting identities. Um, and I think now is also an good time, a good time to mention um, that, you know, race plays a huge role in disability, socioeconomic status plays a big role in disability were two white people talking about disability. Um, it's not necessarily representative. Uh, we also have different experiences by nature of everyone having different experiences, but also you're a man, I'm a woman, different experiences based on gender. Um, and that's just something we should put out there that, you know, these are our experiences, every person Disabled person has a different experience. That's another thing. And I know we're getting away from the question, but um, I think we've both flip-flopped between what language we use yep. in the disability community, disability advocacy spaces. Um, there's identity first language and person first language. Identity mm -hmm. first is a disabled person. Um, a an autistic person, a blind person. Um, and then there's person first, which is a person who is disabled, people with disabilities, a person who uses a wheelchair. Uh, everyone has their preference for what language they use. In some communities, some language is used more often um, rather than the other sort. Uh, it's also important to know that don't assume what type of language a person use, uses or correct them if they're using one of those and you don't like it. Um, so not here to endorse one or the other, just wanted to give that little bit of wisdom. Um, but, uh, back to the question, the intersection of my Jewish um, and disability identities and I sort of touched on this before, um, but Judaism, really those beliefs of tikkun olam, of repairing the world, of equality helps to support the disability advocacy I do. Um, and really disability advocacy seeing it in the Jewish community um, helps to support that faith I have. Really, you know, I can help make the Jewish community stronger by making it more accessible um, through my advocacy work. Do you want to take a swig at that one or? <laughs> yeah, sure. That was a lot of information, which I was like, wow, that's actually really interesting. Like, I definitely have to also piggyback to the, I think it was the sixth or seventh question or the fifth question that we had. For me, I definitely think it does intersect having like growing up, like us two growing up, being Jewish in a household, having a disability, but also there are also some differences that come with it, like two different genders, like you and I, like you mentioned Lily, 
woman, man, we have different ideas of what it means to have a disability. We have different ideas of what it means to be Jewish. There could be also different ideas based on everything. But we also have to figure out where two individuals that are Jewish, that are proud of who they are, they have a disability, and they're proud. So I feel like they intersect in a way because like we're also we're proud of ourselves. We're proud of the work that we have done to promote and also support who we are and also to give advice to those that well, sometimes we're not so comfortable with who they are. But we have to make sure to remember and let them know, be comfortable with who you are. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I agree entirely. I think that, uh, you know, being proud of who you are, being proud of your identity is a huge part of it. Um, to be honest, it can be hard in the world to be Jewish. It can be hard in the world to be disabled. It can be extra hard to be both. Um, so really that pride, that acceptance of the identity is something. And just to sort of piggyback off what you said and add on to what I said earlier, I also feel, and for the reasons I just mentioned, that advocacy in general is particularly Jewish. Um, it's not easy to be Jewish all the time. And I feel like for that reason, people who are Jewish tend to jump into advocacy causes. Don't wanna compare it to other religions, but you know, advocacy is big for people who are Jewish because we know what it's like to not always be seen in the best light, treated the best way. And so I feel like in that sense, um, you know, it's also Judaism and advocacy coming together because we're going to rally behind the cause. We're going to help people out. Um, <laughs> so, you know, moving from the more abstract, I guess, into something that's a little easier. Um, what has been one of your biggest successes as a disability advocate? And what has been one of your biggest challenges? I think like one of my biggest successes as a disability advocate would be uh, working to get like working with my school Center for Student Accessibility and our Hillel to come up with programming that's suitable for both students that are Jewish and also those that are just that are also disabled and also for many students that would like to join. Coming up with different events that students would like to enjoy, coming up with events for, for Disability Advocacy Month in April. Have a, the big event that I made for Disability Advocacy Month, the My Story Play event, I, was, I had a great time doing it. I feel like that was my, my big success because I got to recruit students that were disabled or not, and they wanted to participate for this event for a cause that was meaningful for them. It really sparked in a light in me why I'm proud to be a disability advocate. Like, I think a big, then I think a big challenge would be, of course, if you're a disability advocate and you're doing, um, if you're doing rudiment, for example, on campus, like I did, trying to figure out events, I think it's, it's easy, but trying to figure out who would be interested in partaking it or who would be interested in attending, I think that that's like the biggest challenge because of course, now that we're like before we were in person, everybody would be coming to different events, which is really cool, number of big attendances. But now that we're remote, many students want to focus on classes. So I think with doing events that have to do with advocacy, you have to think very carefully what would the students want most and best? Also think about like, what would they like? Also ask them what they would like. Do they want an event that's, that's uh, intriguing? Do they want an event that's educational about what's going on with them, with their school? That's what I think for me. Mm -hmm. the biggest and I, I think certainly when we're talking about too, like in the educational setting on a college campus, um, you may have your best intentions. You may, you know, want to do a really great event on accessibility or 
not on accessibility, but have it be accessible, um, talk about disability and other intersections. But even if you have the best intentions, it might just not be possible. You know, as a student, you're not going to be able to get a ramp put in a building. Well, I don't want to say you're not going to be able to because students have done incredible things. There have been students who have advocated for and gotten more accessible campuses. But it's unfortunately not always the reality. Um, you might want to do an event in February. You might want to do an event for Jewish Disability Advocacy Month. Um, and, you know, the Hillel building won't work or the building where you guys have food, if it's a separate building, might not be accessible. You know, there's it's. It's a challenge that needs to be overcome. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm rambling, but you know, it's, you can have the best intentions and it can still be difficult, especially when you're a student, especially when you're in an infrastructure that you don't have much control over. Totally um, agree and totally understandable. So I guess we can, uh, go into our next potentially final question. Um, what is one of the most important lessons that you've learned could be about yourself, the disability community, disability advocacy over the course of your advocacy journey? I think for me that one of the most important lessons that I've learned and gained and also garnered from just being a disability advocate is Learn to understand like who you are yourself as a person that's providing the services and programs that you're going for to do on your campus and in your community. And learn, of course, to of course respect one another, make sure that they're feeling okay, making sure that they're welcoming, making sure that they're welcome into any space that they're welcome to in the office, in us, in your school. <clears throat> Especially coming up with programming that really garners your focus on why are you doing this program for disability advocacy? What made you want to do it? So for me, of course, being a disability advocate and being a root of an ambassador has really shaped my understanding of why I would like I like working with those that are disabled and why I also would like to work with them in the near future. Great answer. To answer this question for myself, um, I'm actually, I'm gonna use a quote. Um, it's from the late Rabbi Lynn Landsberg. Um, and I don't know if I'm getting the quote 100%, but it is, it's not enough to ramp buildings. We also have to ramp attitudes. And I think this is a really important thing to keep in mind with disability advocacy, um, because what it means is like we were saying before, you know, accessible buildings, ADA compliance, ADA, I know we mentioned it before, but to explain Americans with Disabilities Act um, had its 30th anniversary uh, last summer. So it was passed in 1990, um, grants civil rights protections to people with disabilities particularly in employment and access to public spaces. Um, so, you know, ADA compliance, having buildings that are accessible, public services that are accessible, um, and all of that is really great. Uh, you know, automatic doors, ramps, accessible bathrooms and parking spaces, all of that stuff is good but it's not enough if the attitudes, the ideas that exist about um, disabled individuals that exist about disability are lacking. And so this sort of uh, connects up to what you said earlier about, you know, you can do anything you put your mind to. Um, when the attitude is that disability is a lack of, or in, that it's something that's 
really holding you back. Um, that's why I don't like using the word handicap, even though, you know, we call them handicap bathrooms, we call them handicap parking spaces call them accessible parking spaces, accessible bathrooms. Um, but really, you know, it's about having the attitudes there as well. Um, and again, to connect to earlier, your diversity and inclusion workshop is held in an accessible building. Everything's up to spec. They don't talk about disability. That's, you know, ramped buildings, not ramped attitudes. Um, so that's something that's really informed the work I do. Um, and especially, you know, on college campuses, uh, where you might not be able to make a difference to the physical environment, you can make a difference to the cultural environment, to the intellectual as insofar as mindset environment. Um, you know, you can create a better understanding of what disability is, what disability means, what it means to be disabled, um, and get rid of a lot of those beliefs that are, you know, less than, can't do. I like that a lot. Actually, I did. I really like that a lot. It's a good quote to live by. It's really mm -hmm. something that's guided me for a while. So, Thank you to everyone for joining us today um, on Hillel at Home for this important conversation about just Jewish Disability Advocacy Month. You may also see it as Jewish Disability Awareness, Acceptance, and Inclusion Month. Mm -hmm. um, you want to do your Hillel at Home -y pitch? Sure. So uh, please do, do check out more programs like these at hillalathome.org and or you can also follow Hillel International on our Facebook and also on our Instagram. You can also check us on our websites. You can also get any type of merchandise if you'd like, which is really cool. And let us know what you would like, what you would like to see per, per event on our platform. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for tuning in.